Hey everybody, Lucky Like to here, and welcome back to another video. So as you guys probably already know, RetroArch has recently dropped on Steam, meaning even more people are going to be knowing about this awesome multi-emulator. In case you're wondering what a multi-emulator is, it's basically the most convenient emulator you'll ever have. It has everything, it has GBA, NES, SNES, G Nintendo 64, you name it, it's on there, I guarantee you. So in today's video, I'm going to be helping you guys set up RetroArch since it can be a bit confusing for a couple new users. Anyways, I hope you guys will enjoy today's video and like to start. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously open up Steam and download RetroArch. It is free and then once it is done downloading, the next thing you're going to want to do is download all free 10 DLCs that come with it. It is required. Although you don't have to download all 10 of them, it is recommended to download all 10 since these are basically your basic emulators. I'll go over what each of them do later in this video. To set up a controller, you're obviously going to need a controller. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Switch Pro controller, but any type of Xbox or PlayStation controller will work. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be connecting my controller via Bluetooth, but you can also connect your controller via USB. And in case you don't know how to connect to Bluetooth, I'll show you guys how to do that super quickly. So go to the bottom left hand corner of your PC and search up Bluetooth, then click add Bluetooth devices, and then click on Bluetooth. Then you're just going to want to hold on the reconnect button on your controller, whichever controller you're on, PS4, Xbox, or Switch Pro controller, and then it should appear. And then boom, that's how you connect your controller. But fair warning, if you are using a Switch Pro controller, it will identify as an Xbox 360 controller, meaning that the controls will be inverted. So X and Y will be switched and A and B will be switched, but I'm going to be showing you guys how to change those controls right now. So to be able to change your controls, you're going to want to have RetroArch open. Once it's open, go ahead and go to settings and then click on input. Once you're in input, scroll down a bit to where it says port 1 controls. Click open on this and then boom, here you are able to change all your controls to how you want them to be. As you guys may have noticed, there are 5 different ports and each of these ports if you're playing locally. So if another friend comes over your house and wants to play some Mario Kart for example, then they are able to change their controls in the other ports if they really want to. So do you guys remember the 10 DLCs I asked you guys to download earlier? This is where it actually comes into play. These 10 DLCs are actually 10 of your basic emulators that come with RetroArch, and I'll go over all of them right now. So Final Burn Neo is an arcade emulator, Genesis Plus GX is a Sega Genesis emulator, Kronos is a Sega Saturn emulator, Messin is for NES, Messin S is SNES, MGBA is Game Boy Advance, PCXX Rearmed is PlayStation 1, Mupin 64 Plus is Nintendo 64, Same Boy is Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and Stella is for Atari 2600. Now that you guys know all your basic emulators, I'm now going to be showing you guys how to set them up on RetroArch and start playing your games. First of all, you're obviously going to want to have the ROMs of the games you're going to want to play. I'm not going to be providing any ROMs in this video, so you're going to have to search that up on your own. Once you have the ROMs for the games you want to play, you're going to want to head over to Import Content. Now you have three options on how you want to add your games. There is one which is scan directory which scans multiple files at once or an entire folder. Or two, scan a file which scans a singular file. Or three, manual scan. I do recommend using scan directory if you can add multi -game, multiple games all at once. Or you can use this also just for one file. Or you can just use scan a file. But I do recommend using scan directory. I find myself using this way more and it's a bit more convenient as well. Now, I do recommend putting all your ROMs all in a one folder, how I kind of have it like here on the screen. It's a bit more convenient and I do recommend having it in your desktop or in your downloads or in your documents, wherever you want it. It's just up to personal preference, but I find myself, you know, having it on my desktop. It's just way easier and more convenient that way. So if you do have it in your desktop, you're going to want to go to C drive, then go to users. Then go to click on your profile and then boom, here's where your desktop is, your documents and etc. So if you have it in your desktop like I do, you're going to want to click on desktop and then click your ROMs folder 
and then here you go here's where you're able to add all your roms now since i'm only gonna add uh, a pokemon fire red i'm gonna be going to my game boy folder and then i'm gonna click scan this directory and then boom here's pokemon fire red on my game boy now depending what game you've added depends on the system you're going to see now in the bottom left corner of RetroArch. Since for example if you add if you also add Pokemon Red, you're now going to see a Game Boy option. If you add Pokemon Fire Red, you're going to see a GBA option and more. Depending what games you add depends what systems you're now going to see in the bottom left corner. Now, you may be wondering how do you add more systems such as a Wii, GameCube, a Nintendo DS, and more? Well, I'll be showing you guys how to do that right now. So now that you've gotten your 10 basic emulators, I'm now going to be showing you guys how to get a variety of emulators, such as a Wii, GameCube, PS2, Dreamcast, you name it, it's probably going to be an emulator on RetroArch. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the two links I left in the description. One that says Core, and one that says System. You're going to be wanting to download those two, and they are zip files, so you're going to have to unzip them once they're done downloading. Once they're done downloading, like I said, you're going to want to unzip both of them, but first unzip the core file and, the, and then copy and paste the unzipped one into your RetroArch files. If you don't know how to get there, just click on this little settings icon, then click on manage, then click browse local files. Once you've pasted your cores files into your RetroArch files, it's going to ask to replace the files, skip the files, or just cancel all of this. You're going to want to click on replace files. Once it's done replacing its files, you're now going to want to go to your systems file and unzip it or extract it. Once it's complete, you're going to want to open up the file and then copy and paste the system file that's in that file. And then you're going to want to paste that file into your RetroArch folder. It might take a while to paste it into the RetroArch folder, so while you're at it, just go get a snack or get something to drink while waiting. And once the system file is done pasting, you're now ready to go to get some Wii games, GameCube games, DS games, and more. In case you're wondering what emulators you now have, go to the main menu of RetroArch and then click on Load Core. And here is all the emulators you now have. And to add Wii games, GameCube games, and other games, it's no difference between the basic emulators as well. You're just going to want to do the exact same steps like I showed you guys beforehand. Now that you've gotten all your emulators set up, you're now going to be wondering, how do you play with your friends? Well, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that right now. First of all, make sure to click on the option that says Netplay if that wasn't obvious already. Then if you're the one hosting the Netplay, make sure to click on Host. Then, make sure to have publicly announced Netplay on. This makes it way easier for your friends to connect to your Netplay session. Then, it's up to you if you want to have Relay Server on or off. If you have it off, it's going to enforce the server password so randoms don't join you. But if you have the Relay Server on, I'm pretty sure it makes it a bit easier for your friends to connect to your session, but it won't enforce the server password. Then, once you've decided on the settings you're going to choose, then click Start Netplay. Then just choose the game you are going to play with your friends. Although, I will say my experience with Netplay isn't the best. There is one issue whenever I'm the host or one of my friends are the host whenever we're gonna do Netplay together, and it's a pretty big issue. Um, for some reason, none of us or none of our controls work. I don't know why, but even when I'm the host for the session or one of my friends are, for some reason, whenever we play something like Mario Kart 64 or some other game, None of our controls ever work. No matter what we tried or tried before, it just doesn't seem to work. I don't know if it's a glitch or bug with RetroArch or Netplay, but I just our controls won't work for some reason, and I don't know why. So this is where Remote Play comes into play. Remote Play is something implemented by Steam, so it's super easy to access, and basically any game that supports Remote Play works pretty fine half of the time, although sometimes it does lag on if the host of the Remote Play doesn't have that much good connection. So, you may be wondering, how do you do Remote Play? You're gonna wanna click on Shift Tab on your keyboard at the same time, then your friends list is going to appear. You're gonna wanna look for the little arrow icon next to your friend's username, click on that, and then click on Remote Play together. They're then gonna want to accept the invite, and once they do, you're able to decide if they're gonna play on keyboard or controller, and then, yeah, you're basically done. Just pick on whichever game you guys wanna play now. When it comes to customization, RetroArch actually has a couple things up its sleeve. 
not only are you able to change the main menu's looks, but you're also able to change your in-game settings, change the resolution, make a widescreen however you want it, however you like it. I'm going to be showing you guys how to change all that stuff right now. So to be able to change the looks of the main menu, you're first going to want to head into settings and scroll down a bit to where you see user interface. Then you're going to want to click on menu. As you guys see here, you have four different options and ozone is automatically selected. These are the four different themes. Ozone is this black and white theme that you guys are seeing right now. So if you were to change it to XMB, it would change into a PlayStation type of theme and I'm a pretty big fan of this. And then if you were to change it to RGUI and changes it into some retro type of theme, and last but not least, if you were to change it to GLUI, it changes it into some Android tablet type of theme. So those are the four different options to change the looks of the main menu. Now let's move on to customizing game settings. When it comes to customizing game settings, you're able to do that in any system you'd like, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be doing it on Nintendo 64. So once you're on the game that you'd like to change your settings in, you're going to want to press F1 on your keyboard. Then you're going to want to scroll down a bit to where it says options. Then, you're going to want to click on the second option, whichever emulator you're on. So, if you're on Nintendo 64, it's going to say Glide N64, but if you were on Wii or GameCube, I'm pretty sure it'd be saying like Dolphin. It just depends on what system you're on. So, whichever system you're on, just click on the second option. Once you do that, in here, you're able to change the resolution, the native resolution, the aspect ratio, whichever you like, up to your personal preference. Fair warning though, since these are the emulator settings for the system that you're on, if I were to change the aspect ratio on Ocarina of Time, it will affect other games like Mario 64 and every other Nintendo 64 game. But besides that, I guess that's it for customization. So you may have noticed, but in case you haven't, RetroArch actually doesn't have any achievements. But what it does have, it does have an achievement built-in system in the emulator for all your games. So in case you're a greedy hunter for achievements like I am, then I'm going to be showing you guys how to set that up right now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and go to a website called RetroAchievements.org. Once you're on that site, you're going to want to create an account. Once your account is set up, you're now going to want to go to RetroArch and then go to settings and scroll down a bit to where you see achievements. Then, once you're inside of achievements, make sure that your achievements are on and then put in your username and password that you made for the account. And then, yeah, that's all you have to do. It's as plain and simple as that. Now, you're, if in case you're wondering what achievements each game has, just go to the website to check the achievements. And I guess that's about it for today's video, so if you guys did enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me since it does help out the channel, and I really do appreciate when you guys show support on these videos. And make sure to drop a follow on Twitch, which is in the description of this video, and make sure to join my Discord server, which is, if, which is available in case you're interested. And uh, that's about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful day, and like it too. Out.